This 2001 LS430 was probably destined for the scrap heap until I came along. This was a classic LS430 story where the dad owned this car and passed away a number of years ago and the transmission was heavily neglected. I don't know if the fluid was ever changed and unfortunately it needs to be swapped. We do have a replacement from a lower mileage car, which is great. So in the last episode, I went ahead and pulled out the engine because there's so many things that we can address that'll just be a million times easier now that the engine and transmission are out of the car. I have parts on order for this thing from quite literally three different continents, but I did manage to go ahead and get the OEM timing kit. So we're gonna focus for now on tearing down the front of the engine so that we can start get, getting some of this stuff off that needs to be cleaned. I mean, look at how disgusting everything is, like that oil filter housing underneath the cam covers, just like everywhere you look, all the covers, the tensioner, I mean, Look at the caked on oil everywhere you look. So we have a lot of cleaning and prep work to do. So we're gonna go ahead and get a bunch of parts torn off of this, primarily in the front of the engine for now. And then we'll consider all the other stuff that we'll need that I'm sure we're gonna discover as we tear into it. Start with the thermostat housing, idler pulley, bucket here in case our thermostat wants to spill out on us. Not 100% sure, but this might very well be the original thermostat. I mean, look at how rusty it is. And the reason why I think that is because I'm pretty sure this Kuze is OEM. And everything else on this car doesn't lead me to believe that anything else would have been OEM unless it's just factory. So we'll see when the new one arrives. Wow. Based on how stuck this gasket is, very well could be the OEM one. All right, so let's see about getting this kind of cooling system th thermostat housing out of the way. So now what we have holding this on is some RTV up here, and then we have this clip for this hose. Okay, and then we need to do a little pry action here. Go. Lots more coolant. Come out. Why would you come out? Yeah, there we go. So I kind of pointed to the wrong thing on this thermostat housing. So this tube that goes into that section back here has an O-ring on it. It may not be super easy to tell because it's coated in RTV, but there's an O-ring right there. But for whatever reason, somebody decided to put RTV there when really all you need it on is this portion here. But even then they used way too much and you can see it's just seeping everywhere. So. Uh, to say, you know, people don't maintain these cars properly is, it's just so sad to see people who don't really care or don't pay attention enough to just look it up. And you definitely don't need 10,000 pounds of RTV like this. All right, let's go ahead and just get this right hand cam cover off here and see what we're working with behind the scenes. Okay. Ooh, is that RTV? Oh my gosh. Okie dokie. This is exactly why I wanted to start tearing into stuff before I claimed that I had every part on hand because I just knew that I wouldn't. I knew I would run into exactly what I'm looking at here. So it would appear that for some reason, somebody in their infinite wisdom decided to take off that bolt there and lather it with RTV. But then if we just inspect more closely, I mean, there's oil everywhere. Like the belt looks oily, the interior of that plastic cover looks terrible. There's a pool of oil right there next to the belt where that kind of cover meets the other part of the cylinder head. I mean, that's why there's so much leaking and gunk right there is because it was just seeping out right here behind that cam cover, but that should never get there in the first place. So it seems like our camshaft seal on the inside kind of behind that belt is probably bad. Let's keep going and find the next disaster to befall me. Yeah, that plastic cover needed to be that tight. Oh, yep, that one too. Go. It's kind of a Lego jigsaw here. Then we've got a little clip in here to undo this wiring harness. There we go. This harness can come out and over, although we have a little bit more of a hang up down there. I think that'll be okay to, to slip this cam cover off though. Remember how I said I was waiting on the next disaster to befall me? Well, I found it. This is like a camshaft position sensor and it's also part of the loom that runs down here uh, to various other things, but it has to come off because it runs 
through the cover here. And in order for that to come out, you can see it runs right in there. That has to come out for this cam cover to come off. But they RTV'd the connector on because they broke it. Granted, I made it a lot worse just now by trying to undo it, but there's RTV. That's what this rubber stuff is. They RTV'd this connector shut because they broke the clip, whoever did the timing belt last, and they made it super janky. They RTV'd a plug instead of just buying a $2 connector and doing it right. So annoying. So I noticed the belt looked like it had a sheen to it. And I assume probably because it looks like there's oil leaking kind of from the camshaft seals here. So it would kind of seep down onto the belt and then probably get pushed out or thrown, you know, down along the belt. Um, but if I rub my finger really anywhere along the belt, you can see my finger has an oily sheen. It's okay, little 3UZ, we'll make you all better. Yay, more massive globs of RTV, woohoo! Okay, connector just goes through and then that cover is off. Let's go ahead and just get this fan kind of idler pulley out of the way. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, that's tight. Oh my God, why are they so tight? It smells terrible in there. One more somewhere, where are you, Mr. Bolt? Oh, nope, just three. And there we have it. Probably want a new one of these because it being so caked and gunked probably is bad or will go bad soon. And then our tensioner. These are so much tighter than they should be. Okay. So now we have everything pretty well torn down, but at this point we need to make sure that our timing is set where we want so that when we remove the timing belt and the tensioners and stuff, nothing jumps or causes us any major concern. So what I'm gonna do is actually go 50 degrees after top dead center. So you can see that there's that mark which has red on it. Of course, there's not normally red there from the factory. Uh, and then there's the T mark. So the red mark is where you would normally go for you know right at top dead center, so zero degrees. And then the T mark is more like 50. And we're gonna do that because these VVTI motors can be a little jumpy and you don't want your you know, camshafts to jump and cause you massive woe. So we're gonna get a uh, wrench on the crank pulley and just turn the engine over by hand until everything lines up where we want it. Crank pulley bolt is a 22 millimeter. And of course, we're still gonna fight compression here because the plugs are in. All right, here's our crank pulley mark. We are in the middle of a compression stroke right now. So it very nearly went further than I actually intended here. So there is the mark on the crank. I have no idea what they're doing with that absolute garbage. Maybe they went behind top dead center possibly, but either way, I want this little mark, that notch there on the crank to be in the dead center of that bolt. And then likewise, the little tiny notch that's there on the, the camshafts, we want that to be dead center of the T on both sides. A little bit hard to see here, but there is a notch there in that camshaft gear as well. So once we get all these marks lined up, we're gonna go just a little bit further, and then that way we can actually impact the crank pulley off, get that plastic cover off, take those two pulleys and the tensioner out, get the belt off, water pump off, and keep going. So in my case here, this one's actually not lining up with the center of the bolt, which is fine because these camshafts are exactly where I want them on the T. So we're all good there. Crank pulley bolt is out. Hopefully our pulley itself just slides right off. Oh yes, beautiful. A couple of tens to get this cover off. Some of the bolts on this engine are extremely tight that don't need to be, and then other ones that should be a little bit tighter like these are not tight at all. Quality workmanship, whoever did this before. Timing wheel, don't wanna forget this. Go ahead and take our tensioner out here. 212s. Oh. Jesus Christ. Oh. And we just wanna loosen this slowly, slowly. Back and forth. There we go. Tension is out. Let's get these pulleys out of the way. Good God Almighty. Ugh. 
10,000 foot pounds was the torque spec, I think. Then we can get the belt off. Let's just get this pulley out of the way here. Eight millimeter Allen key. And there's a washer back here. Don't lose that. That needs to go behind the pulley like this. And our belt can come off. No slipping, please. There we go. Alrighty. And of course, no surprise here, we have a no-name belt except for some random part number. But if you look, our water pump right there says Deco on it. Bad news, we don't like Deco, no. Here comes tons more coolant. Some of which I'll capture. There's an O-ring up here on top of the water pump. It's a little stuck. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, and our little plastic cover. Don't want to forget that. That goes right in here. Gasket surface looks fine. We'll clean that up a good bit. And the first of many more new parts is showing up. Here is the remanufactured alternator, and it does actually look pretty similar to the old one. So this one might have been a reman replacement at the dealer, possibly at some point in the past. And just like that, a new day has dawned here in JJ's automotive laboratory. And I'm finding that this engine is a bit of a Russian nesting doll of problems. Let me show you what I mean. So what we're looking at here is of course the cam gear that our timing belt runs on. And then this portion is part of the VVTI system that will change the variable valve timing. This looks like somebody was trying to stop, kind of stimmy the bleeding of oil coming out of it by taking off this bolt and RTVing it. But you can see a little bit of a hint of a gasket right there. So it seems like whoever worked on this last and did the timing belt saw how much oil was coming out of it. And instead of dealing with this seal, and then there's another one on the inside of this cam gear that is quite difficult to replace, they just decided, ah, we're gonna RTV this. So what we have to do now is dig even deeper than I had originally planned. These valve covers are coming off when the gasket arrives here tomorrow. Uh, but what we have to do now is take the valve cover off we have to take the whole cam out, get this whole gear off, replace the seal on the backside. And of course, nobody stocks that gasket locally, so I have to get it off, just inspect everything, and then order, you know, make another order. Probably all gonna come from Dubai. I mentioned some of the parts are coming from Dubai, some from Japan, some from my dealer and I've gotten a few of the dealer ones. When you wanna do it right and order OEM parts, you have to be patient. All right, so let's start peeling this valve cover off. What we need to do is get the coil packs out. It's funny because this one is Denso, which is the OEM for this car. This one is no name. Those two are some automotive brand I've never heard of, so just crap. And that's the case all the way through. So we will definitely need to replace these because those are just bound to fail and make the car run like crap. Ugh, Jesus. Then we gotta get this wiring harness kind of out of the way. There's a clip right here, which you've already done undone. There's another one, which is just one of those squeeze clips and that'll pop through. But this harness comes all the way down. This is the alternator plug. That is something. What is that too? Where does that go? All the way back here somewhere. Uh, looks like that's the O2 sensor plug right there. So gotta get that undone somehow. There we go. So that gives our harness just enough room to get out of the way here. And then we've got the VVT solenoid right here as well, which also has a broken clip. How wonderful, God, that's so lame, dude. They just break all this stuff and put it back in the absolute quickest, cheapest way possible. I hate when people work on cars like this. I know for a fact this thing was never touched by the previous owner. It was just taken to shop. So it's like, Come on, man, if you're gonna do paid work, just do the right thing to your customer. Tell them, sorry, I broke a couple things. They're five bucks, we're gonna cover it. Or like, we gotta order a gasket. This gasket right here is seriously $1, $1 from the dealer. Or you can get it online for 63 cents OEM shipped to your doorstep. It's like, yeah, you're probably billable hours and you probably gotta get these cars in and out, but like, how? I don't understand how people can just live with themselves cutting corners like that. <sighs> The good news is I'm gonna fix it and do it right. Valve cover coming off. That one I'm not gonna be able to get to. To get to this last valve cover bolt, I'm gonna undo this clip right here on this wiring harness. 
this bolt is super hard to get to in the car. Before we let all this dirt into the engine, let's blow all this off. I know I, I saw the, the spark plugs in there, so it might go down the tube, but no big deal. <laughs> now this should just come right off. Oh no, my bracket's in the way. Oh, look at how varnished it is in there. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. Uh, okie dokie. Oh, it smells like burned oil in there. So my initial reaction was kind of bummed out because of how varnished this is. But honestly, I think it's just a consequence of this being a higher mileage engine and probably a bit too long between oil change in intervals. But I mean, every single cam lobe looks basically perfect. I mean, there are, you know, just some like, some slight marks there, but like there's no scratches. Those don't catch on your nail. Looks pretty great for 180,000 miles and basically the absolute bare minimum maintenance at all times. This looks okay. So now we need to get this front cap off here. You can see this big main cap here. That is the front most cam cap that's holding it on because we need to get to these gears here. Um, and then that's gonna be part of the thing that we need to do to take out this cam. And interestingly, these are splined together with gears, not with uh, any kind of secondary chain, which is awesome, makes it super reliable. All right, so I've never done this before, but to take this cap off, it looks like we need to get the VVTi solenoid out of the way because there's another bolt deep down in there. Oop. Neutral bomb, that one. And it's still tight. It's just insane how much of this is covered in oil. That just like can't be right. I mean, maybe, maybe, but I don't feel like this metal washer would be what secures all that oil in there. Let's get this cap off here. I wonder how hard this is gonna be. Just gonna use a brass drift here underneath this cap so we don't cause any damage. There we go. And, hello? What am I missing? Why am I still on here? Okie dokie. So I went ahead and printed out the factory service manual and basically what we need to do first is get this exhaust cam turned up because there's a service bolt hole location. These gears are actually two. There's a primary and a sub gear. So what we have to do is put a 24 millimeter wrench on this camshaft. We're going to turn it inward so that this bolt hole comes up more over here and then we'll stick a bolt in there. Then at that point, it seems like we can take the pulley off uh, with the big bolt. Then we're going to take the cam caps off of just the intake cam and then that will allow us to get this cap and the camshaft all the way out and replace the seals on that. Pretty big job. I don't think I would wanna do this in the car, to be honest. It's pretty, pretty daunting. And also it's, I'm not gonna get it done today, so I'd have to leave it open, exposed in the car, but thankfully here in the garage, I can at least leave it done. So uh, these factories, this, this one here is actually for the 2UZ, but the principle is pretty much the same. And there is of course a very specific tightening and loosening pattern for the camshaft. So make sure if you're doing this, that you're paying attention to that. Of course, we're not gonna remove the exhaust one, so I'm not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna end up loosening these caps in exactly the order that it says in the document. Another little interesting factoid I wanted to point out is look at this little oil spill on the ground right there. That is directly in line with this frontmost cam cap, which is just sealed down there with FIPG. So pretty amazing how much uh, goop is coming out of this. Every possible thing that's leaking is leaking. Just thought that was pretty interesting that once this came loose, it let even more out. So no wonder why it's just seeping down every possible orifice of this engine. Okay, so I think I found a service bolt that's gonna work. This is a six millimeter and it came off of my truck actually, funny enough. Um, but what we should be able to do is just get on our exhaust cam here, just looking at the instructions. So I'm just gonna kind of practice this real quick. Oh, and by the way, you need to make sure that your crankshaft pulley is where we already put it when we were disassembling the timing components. It has to be kind of advanced towards that pulley like our crankshaft already is. You know what? I realized I'm turning here, but I don't have any reference for how to get back to this point. So, by this point, the service manual shows this gear out of the way here. So what I want to do is just turn this cam slightly back so we're in alignment perfectly on this T so I know when I put it back together that's where this cog needs to be. But it seems like I can go ahead and take this gear off. So let's go ahead and get our wrench on this intake cam. We're gonna turn just and we're gonna turn just ever so slightly back until our T mark Wow. 
Why is that not cooperating? Ah, slipping on that bolt. Come on. It's not what I want. The bolt is almost gone. Almost completely rounded. Okie dokie. So I attempted to hammer a nine onto it. Oh, cross your fingers, people. Oh, I got it. Good old hammer in the nine millimeter on there. Add that to the list of parts that I <laughs> didn't know I'm gonna need, but turns out I need. Ah, what's the deal with this thing? Oh yeah, it's just a little bit stuck on there, that's all. Just gotta work it off. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now will this cap come all the way out? Yeah, okay, so that's all it was. I've been nervous for a while now, and I think I finally have a breakthrough here. So if we take a look on the cams, you can see that there's those two dots. Don't look at the lines, but right above them, those dots. So those are now touching together and those are timing marks. And then if we look at this other cam, there's two dots and that's also on the other one as well. So those need to line up the one to one. If we look at our first cam lobe on the intake side, it's pointing straight up. And the first one here is pointing kind of down towards the exhaust pipes. And that's what we see represented in the service, um, you know, factory service manual here. Same thing in that picture there. Cam lobe is pointed up on the intake and down towards the exhaust on the exhaust side. So like I said, I've been nervous for a while now to do this, but I think we can take the intake cam caps off, get the cams out, and then do what Toyota tells us not to do and service that VVTi gear. Okay, so the sequence is gonna be these on the outside, like start from the outside and work your way in, and you just wanna go a quarter turn at a time on the cam caps. Okay, and then we'll just progressively loosen. Oh, it looks like I have to take off this whole bracket here, this whole oil feed pipe to get this out. Ah. Okay, now this cap can come off. Smash my thumb, but I got it. Then now for the other part. Does this cam just slide backward out of this gear? What does the service manual say? It says remove camshaft. tappage looks like it'll work and then spin it out all right not bad scary but not bad so the part that i said toyota does not want you to do is they want you to buy a whole new vvti solenoid here which is 500 dollars per side and that's absolutely ridiculous because this is a fairly basic mechanical device inside of that solenoid is one simple spring and an o-ring and i want to go ahead and replace the o-ring luckily people have done the hard work for us and found out what you need oh hello mr bug found out what you need in terms of o-ring size because toyota only sells that whole 500 hundred dollar unit and not just the o-ring which is completely silly and of course in our case here we got to get that bolt off and get that sealant off because somebody tried to stimmy the bleeding of the various oil leaks on this car and had no idea what they were doing so we have a bit of work cut out for us we got to get this gear off those bolts on the back of that gear there that'll slide down the camshaft then we have to get the oil seal off right there then they say do not remove those black bolts right there but those are the ones that we want to take apart our solenoid um, and we got to get this nut and the other nut inside of it off as well so a little bit more disassembly here okay so we got our camshaft held in our vise here just on that little hexagonal portion like where we used the wrench earlier we need to get this gear off first of all and there's just a couple of allens on the back they are five millimeter right here this is a bit tedious and heavy. Oh, then I need a new one of those. I guess that's why they say it's non-serviceable. I was just thinking that I needed to mark this, but actually there's a little keyway right here, so it seems like you can't get the orientation wrong. It's like Toyota thought about this or something. 19 millimeter up top here. Oh yeah, flinging a flinging gasket maker. <laughs> yeah, and that looks like a bolt, but it's really just a cap. And then inside here is a 10 millimeter Allen bolt. For some reason, this bolt is on so tightly, I can't get it. I'm gonna try the breaker bar. Oh, there we go. Oh, finally. And then this whole assembly here should just be keyed on. So this should just slide off, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, just like that. I don't know why I still can't get this gear off though. I'm gonna have to resort to the brass drift again, I guess. I don't want it to go clinking down though. 
we go. Okay, and really our gear assembly should just stay here on the cam because when it goes back together, that oil seal will prevent this gear from coming back on. So we don't wanna mess that up. But this is the part that Toyota says don't do. They say don't take off these black bolts. Um, we're gonna do it. I wanna service the VVTi gears. I wanna make sure we're getting all the power we can. And of course we gotta clean up this nonsense from whoever did this before. So to get this off, you need a T30 Torx, which is pretty uncommon in Toyota land. I think that is their way of saying, hey, don't take this apart. There's a big spring in here. So be ready as you open this, that it's going to spring back up on you. And the spring is already coming up. You can see it splitting here. And also we're just gonna note for the future that this little dowel pin for alignment is in the dead center. So that's what we're gonna use as our reference point. Oh, we're popping. Not a very powerful spring, but a spring nonetheless. Okay, there we have it. Very, very simple system. Oil pressure driven VVTi. Got our spring here. And of course there's more oil in here we need to get rid of. What Toyota says is not serviceable is this O-ring right here. Now this thing is Oh my God, it's hard as a rock. This is exactly why I wanted to do this. I mean, this car is 20 years old. It sat in the Florida heat. This O-ring is just obliterated. So we got to get that off and we'll find a replacement one. Luckily, like I said, the hard work's already been done for us on sizing this O-ring because Toyota doesn't sell it. So we're just going to get one from the best possible place we can. This O-ring is so rock hard, it feels like metal. Look at how I have to get this gasket off. And then it goes flying. <laughs> now the thing that's super interesting about this to me is this is the groove that the o-ring should actually sit in and it's been so long and so hardened that it attached to this surface the mating surface there as opposed to the groove the actual gasket goes in so crazy or the o-ring i should say there is what feels like wanton destruction in this garage right now it is a total disaster i have parts and tools everywhere i really need to organize this but man look at all this progress this is gonna be so killer, dude. So I'm not even gonna lie, this has been actually pretty intimidating. The timing belt, not so much, but this whole camshaft business, just the way that this engine is timed is a little bit unique with those gears, or maybe not even unique, but just not something I've come across before or dealt with in great length. And then taking this whole VVTi situation apart has been definitely intimidating and a learning lesson. By this point in the video, I anticipated we'd be in the reassembly phase, putting things back together and moving on to the transmission, probably as the next video, but that didn't work out that way. Like I mentioned earlier on, the kind of Russian nesting doll issue after issue we found as we move deeper into this engine has been in some ways frustrating, but also really exciting because I would never have known that I would have no VVT probably. There'd be no oil pressure because that'd be seeping through and probably causing some of the leaks that we can see on the front end of the motor. So by digging this deep in, we're gonna make this thing even more perfect than I had anticipated. Although I had a different narrative for the video at the beginning, hope this is still helpful. The next video on the LS430 might take a little while because I'm gonna have to order a bunch more parts. I wanted to say thank you for all the support recently. So many new subscribers and views. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can consider joining as a member here on the channel a couple bucks a month depending on which plan you choose you can get a few various perks on the channel like behind the scenes updates and things like that so have a look with that join button down below as you know i'm addicted to toyotas and they are quite expensive i love every second of what i do so any support no matter what even if it's just watching the videos means a ton now let me share with you my plan for the next video now spread across the ground and two different workbenches. We have so much disgusting goop and grime that we have to clean. And I'm so excited because I have something really cool coming that I think will mean these parts that we're putting on all the old stuff is going to look basically brand new. The way we're going to refresh it, I think will surprise you. So I'm super excited to give it a go. I've never had one of these machines before, but I can't wait for you to see it. And that will be in the next video as well. Our poor stricken LS430 is going to have to live on the jack stands a little bit longer, but I hope little car, you think it's worth it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.